the next bit is electron affinity so I already briefly covered this uh, as part of this equation just now when one mole of gaseous atom gain one mole of electrons to become one mole of gaseous ion with a single negative charge that process has an enthalpy change that enthalpy change is called electron affinity so it is the enthalpy change when one mole of a gaseous atom gain well gains one mole of electrons to form one mole of gaseous ion in fact I think I've done something wrong with the grammar there you can skip a uh, because one mole is definitely not just one atom so one mole of gaseous atom gains one mole electrons to form one mole of gaseous ion with single negative charge all right so the next bit of the question is asking you huh it's quite a funny one they are giving you four lines for one mark and this is a suggest an explanation so it looks like they are it seems like they are asking for a lot for just one mark yeah anyway so you think you need to think about um, what are the factors that govern electron affinity so we need to compare for fluorine versus carbon so we know that for fluorine this is what happened fluorine plus one mole of electrons give you f minus gas versus carbon gas plus electrons giving you carbon minus gas so in doing so so this is the first electron affinity in doing so so fluorine atom would have a electronic configuration of neon when it gains one electron well should probably use the full word itself um, and then this is this is not true this is not applicable with carbon to be honest I still haven't explained it really okay so I guess this is where I start to explain in terms of the effective nuclear charge so fluorine has a lot more protons than carbon so fluorine atom has more protons than carbon so eh, sorry then yeah more protons than carbon because carbon has only six proton fluorine atom has nine protons so as you can imagine uh, the, the, the charge of the nucleus is uh, higher for fluorine so therefore fluorine has higher nuclear charge to attract the extra electron okay therefore more exothermic more exothermic meaning more favored more favored for fluorine than carbon so as you can see this is minus one to zero kilojoule per mole previously it was given as uh, minus 350 kilojoule well, 34 at 350 kilojoule per mole that's because it's a more favored process so going back i should probably just cancel out this particular uh, this particular uh, that particular thing which I just wasted my time on okay I should probably go straight to talk about carb protons and electrons and whether one is more favored than the other okay so that is also the reason how you get electronegativity fluorine being more electronegative than carbon as a result of comparing the number of protons giving the nuclear charge the electrons the shielding and then they get the effective nuclear charge all right Next bit, so chlorine is in group 17, so 7 outer shell electrons, suggest the trend in the first electron affinity, so that is your part 1, so what happened down the group, what happened to the uh, affinity to attract electrons to itself, and explain your answer, this has actually got to do with Z effective, and therefore electronegativity. So I hope you know that the trend in electronegativity is a result of your uh, effective nuclear charge, which is a result of nuclear charge, 
uh, shielding as well as uh, this is the net effect all right so um, I'll probably I'll probably talk about explanation first I'll do number two first does not matter which one you do first but if you know my tutorial videos I usually like to explain first before I come up with the trend because to be honest I don't actually remember a lot of trends I remember the important things but that is me and if you are the type who like memorizing when it doesn't make sense that is you then um, I can't I can't do anything about it you know it's just different people have different memory strength and I'm very forgetful okay so we know that electronegativity decreases down group 17 um, because even uh, when nuclear charge increases because the number of proton increases as number of proton increases down the group we are talking about the shieldings is um, a shielding effect uh, increases much more and that is due to more shells due to more uh, shells being filled okay so there's to do electronic activity therefore group 17 elements become less lightly become uh, have a lower tendency so less lightly or lower tendency or have lower tendency to accept electrons and if I have lower tendency to accept electrons so my first electron affinity uh, will become um, less exothermic is less exothermic but again I don't know whether it's positive or negative you can say less exothermic or more endothermic it's really up to you whichever one you like but less exothermic means it's moving away from being negative and therefore it will become more endothermic but we don't know whether it's plus or minus right here I'm just talking about direction so it's more important uh, if you want to talk about magnitude because they did not say magnitude they just said trend so I could do this if they want to talk about magnitude magnitude means the numerical value so the numerical value will get smaller okay uh, if it is less exothermic okay next bit is a bone haber cycle so they want you to name enthalpy changes okay they want you to name uh, enthalpy changes delta h4 and delta h6 delta h4 is here delta h6 is here so think about delta h4 first for example so you start from here and you end up here okay this goes to this there's no change in the aluminium so this has got nothing to do with the aluminium there's no change in the charge there's no change in the state there's no change in the number there this is the fluorine gaseous atom fluorine gaseous atom this is the fluoride gaseous anion so what has happened is this fluorine atom has gained electron in fact three of them has gained three electron so this is actually the first electron uh, maybe i should have used the word instead of a uh, symbol first electron affinity of fluorine but then the first electron affinity of fluorine is defined for one mole of gaseous atom adding one mole of electrons to give you one mole of gaseous ion with single negative charge so that is actually the first electron affinity of fluorine multiplied by three all right based on that definition delta h6 on the other hand is going from is the formation of the ionic compound from its elements from its element not from its ions but formation what for one mole of this substance from its element in their standard state okay so this is actually the enthalpy of formation uh, again i should probably write it in word so this is the enthalpy of formation of aluminium trifluoride okay and and we don't multiply by anything because we have essentially forming one mole of it that's why it's just the enthalpy of formation of alf3 multiplied by three so now they want you to use the data in the data booklet as well as that to to work out the the lattice enthalpy 
uh, of that ALF3. So what you need to understand is the diagram is already drawn for you. If I color this in green, you want the lattice energy of ALF3 and the lattice energy of ALF3 is actually this one because you are forming the one mole of the ionic solid from its free gaseous ions under standard step, right? Okay, so what happened is to go down here, you need to go up there like this. Oops, uh, you need to go like this. You see, so Hess cycle works like that. I mean, you should know that uh, there's also the Hess law, which defined as uh, regardless of the position of the route you take, as long as you start from the same reactant and end up at the same product, the energy change is going to be the same. Okay, or you could define it as like energy change, enthalpy change is independent of the route that the reaction take, as long as your reactant and your products are the same. Okay, so what's gonna happen is it's gonna be delta H five. I'm just gonna write here. Then uh, maybe I should write it at the bottom there. So delta H five, which is your lattice enthalpy, is going to be minus delta H four because delta H four is going this way. I'm going the opposite way, so it's minus delta H four. Minus delta H four plus. So all of this is going up. So I need to do minus delta H three minus delta H2, minus delta H1, this is going down, so it's plus delta H6. So it's going to be, uh, sorry, it's going to be minus delta H3, minus delta H2, minus delta H1, and then plus delta H6. Importantly, you need to know um, what is this delta value here, okay? So if you look at delta H6, delta H6, you already define it. Delta H4, you already define it, right? Okay, there are some other definition here. So you can think about half F2 gas goes to F gaseous atom. So this is to do with atomization of fluorine. That is to form one mole of the gaseous um, atom from its... Um, uh, from its element, uh, understand the state, right? But you are also, both of these are gas, and this is molecular FF. So delta H atomization of F, which is forming one mole of the gaseous atom, is equal to breaking the bond of FF. Sorry. is equal to breaking the bond of FF, but divided by two, because you are breaking half mole of the covalent bond. So this value is given in the data booklet. That's why it's not shown here on the on the um, on the information in this table. So getting the bond energy of fluorine from the data booklet is one five eight, and is this going to be plus seventy nine kilojoule per mole? So we know it's going to be endothermic regardless. Yeah. Um. What next? So you know aluminium uh, going to tier. So basically this is the sum of first plus second plus third IE. They already they already work it out for you. This is the first electron affinity of fluorine. But remember we define it as three of it because you are forming three mole of the gaseous ions because this one is getting three mole of electrons. So don't forget to multiply by three later on. So um Delta H4, so there's a minus. What is delta H4? Delta H4 is the first electron affinity of fluorine multiplied by 3 based on this diagram. So when we have worked out, this is probably one of the harder bit because people don't realize that you need to relate these two information together. So this is actually the, the uh, atomization of the fluorine there. Um, but first, delta H4 is the electron affinity of Fluorine multiplied by 3, so it's actually 3 times minus 3 to 8. Delta H4 is this times this. The negative is carried forward because it's to do with the direction that we are talking about. So be careful with your arrows. Delta H3, 
delta h3 is from here to here so you are you are doing uh, ionization of the aluminium first plus second plus third which is actually given here so delta h3 is plus 1537 delta h2 is forming three mole of gaseous atom forming three mole of gaseous atom so it's actually three times the atomization of fluorine you are forming three mole of gaseous atom so there's your delta h3 so delta h3 is going to be three times plus 79 how about uh so where are we now sorry that was delta h2 sorry delta h2 uh, i will correct that with delta h2 the next bit is uh, delta h1 so delta h1 is uh, going here so what you're doing is you are you are going from aluminium solid to aluminium gas aluminium solid to aluminium gas is plus three two six uh, so that is just plus three two six and then the next one is going to be plus delta h6 Delta H6 is the enthalpy of formation ALF3. You are forming one mole of it. So this is the formation of ALF3 from its element in standard 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 condition. You are forming one mole of it. So it's just 1 times minus 1504. So now just to put everything into the calculator, minus 3 times 3 to 8 negative, minus 5137, minus 3 times plus 79 minus 1 time plus 326 plus 1 time 1504 negative uh, and I got minus 6220 kilojoule per mole as this is a calculation question and uh, I'll always advise you to actually double check your calculation so let's just put everything to the calculator again and making sure that we actually get the exact same value because you I know we want to be confident, uh, but you know sometimes we can key in things incorrectly to the calculator. So there's minus 6220 as well. Uh, sign, value, and units. So lattice energy, delta H5 is lattice energy. Lattice energy is expected to be negative anyway, uh, based on our definition uh, for lattice energy for the Cambridge International uh, curriculum. All right. This is asking using data from the data booklet. So you have to quote some data. How the lattice energy of ALF3 compared to SCF3. So the anion here doesn't change. So the anion F minus unchanged. So you are basically comparing uh, the radius of AL3 plus versus the radius of um, scandium 3 plus. So from the data booklet, you can get that to be 0 0.05 nanometer. And then the scandium 3 plus radius is equal to 0 0.081 nanometer. As you know, we are talking about the lattice energy. So we are forming, in this context, we are forming the ionic lattice. As the anion is unchanged, if your cation is um, both are plus 3 and plus 3, so the charge is the same. So since plus 3 charges, for both are the same but the size the ionic radius is different but the charge density therefore will be different so because of the smaller size of aluminium will be uh, the charge density is therefore will be um, larger than that of scandium therefore stronger stronger ionic bond form between al3 plus and f minus compared to sc3 plus and f minus therefore the lattice energy of sc sorry of al f3 is more exothermic because you are forming much stronger uh, ionic uh, bond uh, is more exothermic than the enthalpy of lattice of SCF3. Okay.